I don't think a lot of people outside who don't understand comics really understand what they mean to people. And when you try to explain that to a lot of people, they just don't get it. No, they don't. And hey, everybody. Welcome to Comics with Bueller. As always, I'm Bueller. Today is episode 85 of the new Coffee and Comics show. As you can see, I'm not alone. i got my good friend Bob here with me. Bob, how are you today? I'm a little tired today. We celebrated 4th of July last night, but other than that, I'm doing good. Yeah, it was 4th of July. I did nothing. Nothing at all? I literally sat here on my couch and watched... Well, it's kind of depressing. Was so it, I have to move on right now. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't, was it like Office Space where I, I did nothing at all and it was everything I thought it could be? That's exactly what it was. All right. So. <laughs> but let's go ahead and talk about the coffee that we're drinking today because the coffee is brought to you by Mocha Express, the official coffee shop of Comics with Bueller. I'm drinking a peanut butter latte. And these are really good. Is it? You got it for me. Did they use the syrup or real peanut butter? Do you know? They used the syrup. On okay, this the one. syrup is better. Is it? Yeah, than the real because the real peanut just gets all clunky. Really? And yeah. did I mess up because I got you a peanut butter mocha? Oh, I, I can't really tell the difference. Okay, cool. You know the difference <laughs> between the latte and the mocha? Chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only difference. But exactly. well, I'm gonna have it. Awesome. <laughs> Ah, that's good stuff. Okay, what do you got? Uh, one of my favorite drinks of all time. It's usually my go-to, but here I've been, I've been on cold brew. This is an iced Americano, and I love them. Iced Americano. Does it have anything in there? Any sweetener that makes it really tasty? Ream, nope. Just that straight espresso roast taste that I love. That's perfect. So yeah. you, you got that at Mocha Express? Got that at Mocha Express. The official coffee the shop. The official of coffee shop. Mm -hmm. One of the best, if not the best, coffee shops <laughs> in the state of Oregon. <laughs> This is true. Oh, is I'll true. tell you. I'll tell okay, you. there we go. What's the, what's the other one? <laughs> the Refuge The coffee. Refuge is pretty good, too. I like that there one. There we go. It's, it's a close second. <laughs> there you go. Uh, uh, All right. How about that? Dueling coffee houses. Here we go. There we go. Well, we got a great topic to discuss today. Uh, our topic is going to be, who got you in the comics? We asked that on the preview video from last week. Uh, there was over 100 responses. We went through all the comments. We picked out a bunch that we really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. But really, all of them were great. Yeah. Uh, I read every one of them. And uh, it's not easy to put together this list. But you know what? We had to <laughs> narrow it down somehow. So I picked out the ones I really enjoyed, and we're going to talk about them here in a little bit. But before we get started, if you want to stick around and get to know us a little bit better, let me go ahead and run down some stuff. Um, if you would like to join our Patreon, it's $3.99 a month, the price of one comic book a month. If you think we provide the value worth one comic book a month, please go ahead and join. And also at the end of the video, we have a little video featuring our patreons it's a little like star wars ticker thing it's kind of cool i put yeah. that together so not bad if you want to join please do so if not don't worry about it no big deal uh, but one thing i do want to do we're going to do a channel spotlight this whole week and we're going to highlight a channel that both me and bob really enjoy and we think it's worth your time to check out we've talked about them on this channel before it's hero and the kid yeah and this is will and sean uh, father and son duo doing a bunch of uh, comic book content on YouTube and it's really great to watch them do their thing absolutely they've got great episodes and not to mention Will the younger son he is doing interviews of creators yeah and so far he has had Ryan Stegman he points that out all the time all the time <laughs> and then he's just recently had Scotty Young on the show yeah and we're privy to some information they're just getting started. Yeah, that's for sure. There's more creators coming. We can't tell you who they are, but we kind of know. We kind of know. We yeah, kind of know who I'm they are. I'm pretty excited. Yeah, so <laughs> we're, we're very excited. But uh, they are just getting started, and they are worth your time. So please check out their channel. I'll be mentioning them all week. Their link is down below, and also they're a featured channel on the homepage for Comics with Bueller. So check out their channel. They're at about 650 subscribers. Mm -hmm. We're going to see if we can't get them to 1,000 subscribers this week. That's 350 subscribers. We think we can do it. And you know what? If Will can start making some money on his channel and save for college... That'd be awesome. Come on. So there you go. He's like a <laughs> freshman in high school, so maybe we can help out you know, there you go. down the road. So please check out here on the kid. It's definitely worth your time. I want to go ahead and shift gears because we're going to go ahead and look at Robbie's pick of the week. Hey everybody, I'm rocking Robbie Billups from Pop Culture Philosophers. Just enjoying some cold brew coffee and a Spike or Masters of the Universe action figure. I hope you're enjoying your morning and your show. And my pick of the week is Firepower by Image Comics. This one is written by Robert Kirkman and art by Chris Samney. 
Uh, I don't know. I know you didn't have a chance to pick this one up this week. Uh, I will have to say this is an amazing book uh, from start to finish. It kind of puts you on firm footing with some you know tropes that we know about. Um, you know, like high in the Himalayas looking for the great temple, martial arts, clans. Uh, Iron Fist. I mean, all these type of tropes are in there, but it is its own story, and it's really, really good. So I agree with Robbie. That's his pick of the week, and, man, it's a great read. If you haven't got this one in your collection yet, definitely put this on your radar. So I saw this one. It's a trade paperback. Yes. But it's only $9.99, right? Right. So that's a pretty good deal. I probably won't read it because it's a trade, and I just don't read trades. Right, right. I hear you. I hear you. (laughs) But, uh, you know what, Robbie spoke really highly of it. I know you reviewed it on your video over the weekend. Yes. And you really enjoyed it. So this is definitely worth the pick of the week. And there wasn't that many books that came out this past weekend because there was no DC or Marvel. So this is a nice alternative that Image put out for us. Absolutely. They also put a free comic book day issue uh, alongside of it. I didn't get that issue. But this is a prelude to where the story is going. Nice. From what I understand, you don't really need to read it to get into the rest of the story. But I would highly suggest it because it's it's amazing. Very cool. Let's go ahead and shift gears and go ahead and go to our first five books. Sure. So we'll take this one down Mm -hmm. and we'll put mine back up there because we did this in reverse order. (laughs) But this is Negan Lives number one by Image Comics. You read it. You really yeah, enjoyed it, right? I did. I didn't. I, it. I haven't read it yet. It's just the regular. Co- Apparently, there's three different covers with a shiny gold or silver. Right. And the one is selling for just like an outrageous amount of money. Over 400 bucks. Yeah. And just so people know, this was a free book. Right. Nobody paid a thing for this book. They were free the comic shops. Right. I, just saying, just putting that out there. Okay, Guys. next book. <laughs> uh, Olympia number five. Very Very cool. One of my favorite stories just wrapped up. Mm -hmm. And then this book actually was given to me by Bob uh, last week. The Punisher 102. Look at that. Bullseye on the front. He signed it and everything, so it's worth tons of money now. Yeah, of course it is. There you go. (laughs) Uh, Old Man Logan, number one, the annual. This is the variant. I just really like that cover. Yeah, I wanted to show it off. And last one is Captain America, number 180. I think this is the first or origin of Nomad, if I'm oh, not nice. mistaken. I, I'm probably wrong. I'm Normally, I'm wrong. Right. But this is my first five. Nice. You got well, five? Is definitely Nomad. Yes, I got five. All right. Let's see them. <laughs> All right. Uh, and you know me. I'm, I'm going to stick with my, with my old friend. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I have some Daredevil covers here. I got issue number 304. Always like that cover. Uh, issue number 16. This is on the Bendis run, and uh, I really love this cover because of uh, the characters that are on it. Uh, then I got Daredevil number 295 with some Ghost Rider action on there. And then I got two copies of Daredevil number one. There's this copy. And then there's this one. Who is that? This one's actually signed by Charles Soule. Well, there you go. There you go. I'm going to straighten them out a little bit right there so they don't fall over. Perfect. Thank but, you very much. It's autographed. It's autographed. Mine's autographed too, but it's by you. So it's. But what what it, are you going to do? It's right? worth money. Okay? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. Well, awesome books. Not surprised you showed Daredevil. You're probably going to throw show like Deathstroke next, right? How'd you know? I kind of figured it as much, but whatever. <laughs> we'll, we'll get that to the end of the video. All right. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump into our topic. Like I said, our topic was who got you into comics. Mm. This is almost like an origin story for how people got into comics. And like I said, there were so many great comments that were left. And we're going to do our best to cover them. But do me a favor. Just go look at the comment section for the preview video. And like I said, there's over 100. And there's some great stories to be told. And it's worth your time just to go and read those and say hello to fellow collectors and hear similar stories, very similar stories, all the way down the board. Yeah. And that's really cool. So you're up first, Bob. Sure. So the first one comes from uh, Patrick Melagrano. And he says, um, my brothers had comics when I was about seven years old. The ones that stood out to me were the McFarlane Hulk books and covers, especially Hulk 340. After that, I started buying Hulk and Amazing Spider-Man with the late 200s and all the 300s with Venom and Carnage stuff. Then they killed Superman, and I had to get all of those tie-ins, and I never looked back. Been collecting ever since. I love that one. Those are great covers. Yeah. Those McFarlane Hulk covers. I mean, you only did like five of them, I think. Yeah, there's not not that many of them. Yeah, but the one with the Wolverine on the front, and then the other one where he's like, kind of crouching down and stuff. Those are two of my favorite. I don't know what... I think it's number 400. I could Something, be wrong. Somewhere around there, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, face it, we love McFarlane's yeah. artwork, 
But, you know, that Hulk stuff was just so much different than anything else yeah. that was out. And, I I mean, to me, it's iconic. Yeah, it, it definitely made Hulk look different. For sure. Than what I was used to seeing yeah. up until that point. So, yeah. very cool. The you other know, thing that I love about that particular comment is that that's a lot of people's stories from the 90s. Yeah. You know, I mean, that era with, you know, McFarlane and then beyond that, the death of Superman, that kind of rounded out everything. We have to remember that that was a lot of people's first foray into comics. Yep, that's true. Yeah, it's awesome stuff. Rob Liefeld in there as well. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> Hi, Rob Liefeld. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, I got the next one. Mm -hmm. This is from Rodney uh, Cantina. I think that's right. Says, the first comic book I ever saw was the Ghost Rider and Incredible Hulk. They were at the dentist's office that I went to as a kid. I went to this dentist for many years, and every time I went there, I read these same books. I couldn't tell you which issues they were, but if I saw them again, I'd definitely be able to pick them out. Fast forward some years, maybe five or six, my best friend in elementary school got his first comic book from Walden's Books. You remember Walden's Books? I remember books? Walden's yeah. Books. Uh, while there, I saw an issue I was interested in, which was Uncanny X-Men number 142, and I bought it. About a week later, he had a bunch more comics and told me about an LCS called The Little Comic Book Shop in the next town over. We got on the bus went to the shop, and I bought whatever my $5 allowance would buy. For me, it was a grab bag. We continued going to that shop exclusively for many years until a comic shop opened really close to our houses. I can still remember my friend and I running through the rain with comics tucked under our shirts trying to protect them. We were lucky that all the shops we went to bagged and boarded their comics. I always loved comics from the first time I saw them, but if it wasn't for my best friend during childhood, I would have never gotten as deep into comics collecting as I did. Yeah. That's pretty cool to have a buddy at the same age, you know, who collects comics. I mean, now we're in our, well, anyway, <laughs> uh, we're close. Right, and We right. got buddies that collect, but yes, it would have been pretty cool to, to, you know, be at a young age and have your best friend or whatnot as in the comic books as you are. Yeah. And going to that, you don't see that. Right no, now. no. You, know, you don't see a lot of kids, just in general, who collect comics. And you don't see groups of kids going in the comic shops, buying comics and stuff like that. Right. Or tucking them under their shirts so they don't get wet or stuff like that. But yeah. this is such a great comic. I really like reading this. I like the fact that one good thing you could take from a dentist's office is literally they had comic books that's right, that's right. on the desk that you read every time. So I was like, oh, great. I get to go back to the dentist and read comic books. Right. That's the only plus. Sure. Yeah. That was my favorite part about going to barber shops. There was always a comic book there. Yeah. I, my favorite shot about going to my uncle's house was the magazines he had in his bathroom. Yeah. I don't want to talk about those yeah, ones. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I got the next one as well. Even mm -hmm. though that was a really long one I just read. Um, this one is from Easy Reader says, my dad got me started. He came home from a business trip with comic book packs, and my life was changed forever. He regretted it. <laughs> <laughs> I often wonder mm -hmm. all the money that my mom gave me over the years, you know, to collect not only comic books, but like baseball cards. And those aren't worth nothing, no. you know. But all the money, did she ever regret just shelling out that money or just giving me that money when... I probably could have used it for something else. You know? Sure. And I don't know if that's what he's referring to. Maybe it was just the obsession, the comics, the simple fact that they're all over the place, you know, when you start collecting and yeah. it takes up your whole life and rooms and everything and relationships get ruined and all that good stuff, you know. Right. It happens. It happens. <laughs> my, you know, what's funny is my dad was kind of the opposite. You know, most of my money was spent on video games and he mm. hated that because he felt I was just feeding the machines yeah uh, but when I started collecting comics and like football cards he was here take the money really? <laughs> you know? yeah so different experience for me very cool <laughs> all right Bob you are up next as well like I said we're just kind of going through all these comments you know because the last couple weeks we kind of got really deep into some topics and you know what we kind of want to take a little break yeah from the deepness I guess for and just enjoy the comics and the other fans who enjoy comics so I thought this was a nice little break but next week we'll probably get into some dirt and uh, <laughs> stir some things up a little bit sounds good to there me there you go okay alright uh, this one comes from Ghost Bat he says my mom had friends who were soldiers and fought during the Vietnam War when they returned from duty they would stop by the house to visit they'd often give me a dollar bill and ask me to go to the neighborhood drugstore and pick up comics 
This was in the late 60s, and the comics were 12 and 15 cents an issue. This is the Silver Age. I would spin the rack and be mesmerized, as you can imagine. I'd always buy Batman and Spider-Man first, and then pick others based on how cool the covers would be. After they would get done reading them, they'd let me keep them. Wow, did I ever have a huge collection after some time. Great memories. I love that comment. Do you think he still, he still has them? That's what I was wondering. I mean, I was reading I was thinking the same thing. I wonder if he still has those. You gotta let us know, Ghost Bat. That's what we, we want to hear. We want to know if you still have those books. Yeah, exactly. Because, uh, you know, to still have those books from that time period and through this whole collecting experience. A friend of mine, Joel, mm -hmm. he... Uh, he still had his Amazing Spider-Man number 129. Mm. He bought it off the rack as a little kid. He got it graded last year and it came back like a 9.4. Wow. So through all these years, when, I don't know when that came out, in the 70s. Mm -hmm. But he's had it in this collection since he was a little kid. And here it comes back graded a 9.4. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I, I had a, just a similar experience just this last week. Um, out of all the comics I let go of, there was only one that I kept. I, I wanted to keep two, but there was only one that I kept. It was one of my first number ones that I ever bought, and that was the new Teen Titans when it came out, mm. right, by George Perez and, yeah. and, and uh, Marv Wolfman. I sent that off to get slabbed and signed by George Perez, and it came back in 9.0, man. Yeah. I was like... Flipping out. I see you had it on your video. On my video, my yeah, unboxing yeah. video. And that was the only one that I kept, and so I was very happy about that. Very one. cool. That's, that's nice. You know, to, to still have some of those books from when you were younger, this is obviously a different time frame because that's back when they were 12 and 15 cents. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Ghost Bat's a little bit older than me, probably the same age as you. No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. 1969, Boom, I'm three years old, there's, buddy. <laughs> there's two of them already. <laughs> okay, Bob, you're up next. All right. This one comes from Woodog Comics. He says, hey, Bueller, my first comic experience was when my parents used to put me in front of the spinner rack of comic books and leave me there for hours. That was their version of a babysitter for me. <laughs> I love that. I like that, man. <laughs> my parents would drop me off at church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they would just go. Yeah. They're like, oh, here's church. We'll be back in like four hours. Yeah. And I was like eight years old. I would much rather be dropped off at 7-Eleven. I hear you. And then just sit there in front of a spinner rack. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's church. But at that time in my life, at eight years old. But I get the babysitting thing. I used to uh, take my kids like to Borders, mm -hmm. and I'd sit there for hours and read, and they would just read comic books all day. Yeah. You know, so I, I get it. Yeah. Well, I, I like that better. I do. I do. Um, I have the next one as well. This one is from James uh, Kilkenny. 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 My uh, stepfather got me into it when he started dating my mother as a good way to connect with me. It worked. That, there's a lot of crappy step parents out there. There are. I mean, um, I'm pretty blessed. I'm, I have two step parents, and uh, one took some time to get used to, but after a while, it, was, it wasn't bad. Yeah, but yeah. Another one was, it was uh, pretty much a natural. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, for that step parent to see that, hey, I need to connect with this kid. And maybe comics is a good way to do it. And obviously, like uh, James said, it worked. That's awesome. Because I think so too. you have to connect with that child, you know, and. Uh, Superheroes and comic books are a really good way to do it. Absolutely. I, I, I love that comment. That really, really hit home. Yeah. <clears throat> I have the next one as well. Uh, this one is from William uh, Betha. Betha? Bethea. Bethea. We, really? <laughs> <laughs> says, uh, my dad got me into comics. I had a problem reading when I was younger, and he pulled a comic off the rack at 7-Eleven. It was a G.I. Joe comic. I love the cartoon and toy, so he put two and two together. My son has a comic book collection, and he is still collecting in his 20s. Thank you for all that you do, man, and know your work is a blessing. I love the G.I. Joe comic. Yeah. yeah. And the TV show and the toys. <laughs> I had all of them. I had all of them. Did you? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, that was the... Besides comics... I mean, there was a, a place called Sprouse Ritz. I don't, I don't It was just a local store in mm -hmm. Canby, Oregon. And they had G.I. Joe's. And uh, my allowance was two fifty. okay? And G.I. Joe's were two eighty nine. dollars It was like, come on, I can't squeeze, you know, 39 more cents out of my mom. Right. No, I usually hit up my dad, and sometimes he would. Mm -hmm. But I'd get my allowance, and I'd go to that uh, Sprouse Ritz, and they also had comic books. So mm -hmm. I always would sit there and go, do I get a G.I. Joe figure 
or do I get comics and some other stuff? And for the most part, the comics won out. But if the comics were G.I. Joe comics, it was a double win. Yeah, yeah. But if I did get the extra 50 cents, a lot of times I picked up that G.I. Joe. For sure. I, lo- I love G.I. Joe. Yeah, G.I. Joe is awesome. Yeah. I-, I started in G.I. Joe in the 70s when they were the taller figures. Yeah. But I remember when the smaller figures came out, I, could- I couldn't help myself. I had to get them. They were just so, so cool. Like the Barbie dolls. Not the Barbie doll. Yeah, like the yeah, tall like the Barbie doll. Yeah, you had, you had yeah, the yeah. Barbie dolls. No, you know, I had the GI Joe, the Kung Fu grip, not Barbie dolls. <laughs> well, awfully, uh, it's a little frisky there. Okay. <laughs> this one's from Dave Had Enough One Eight Seven. I actually just got into comics, but always watch the movies. To be honest, I was actually big into collecting Funko Pops, but slowed down on them and got into comics. I always saw them at my local comic store and said one day I might give them a try. I ended up loving them. I also had a neighbor that had most of all the big trade paperbacks, and that was another reason I got into them. Are you a Funko fan? You know, I wasn't in the beginning. I kind of hated them when I when they first came out because they were everywhere and I didn't understand them. Yeah. Um, but there, but since there's some characters that I've picked up, and so when it's like ones that I like, yeah. then I'll go buy them. Yeah. yeah, but I don't collect them like avidly. Yeah, yeah. You put it right next to your Barbie dolls. <laughs> that's in, that's in my living room, right? <laughs> they get nowhere near my Smurfs. I just want to let you know. No, don't bring that up. <laughs> uh, you know, I have like uh, I have three of them, and I literally bought Toys R Us was going out of business. It was mm-hmm. like the last weekend, and like they had them all for like a buck. Oh, wow. And it was like a three-pack of some wrestlers, and I just bought it because I had never bought any before. Mm -hmm. I think they're sitting on my shelf or something. But um, I didn't know until that point that, like, Everett, Washington is, like, the headquarters for Funko. Yeah. And they've got, like, the whole town uh, dedicated to Funko Pops. Yeah. You can go down there. It's almost like a museum and a store and all that stuff. Have you gone? Yeah. Last year, I went to the um, Pop Culture Museum for the big Marvel exhibit. Yeah. And uh, while we were there, we took a trip up to Everett and went to the Funko Pop headquarters. And it was an amazing trip. Mm-hmm. And you're right. You you drive down the main drag of town. Yeah. And it, there's just Funko Pop, huge Funko Pop statues yeah. everywhere. And uh, the, the store itself is like a museum. They got a, a DC section, a Marvel section, a Harry Potter section, then yeah. a Star Wars. It was really... It, it was really cool. Yeah, I watched a documentary on how they started, mm-hmm. and they were just bobbleheads. I mean, yeah. that's all that's where they came from and stuff, you know. And I guess people like them. Yeah, yeah. I think I think my my my, my favorite thing about the store is they got one place that's just dedicated to Stan Lee, yeah. and I love that. That's very cool. Yeah. All right, you're up on the next one, Bob. Yeah, this one comes from Lonnie Bostrom. He says, "In the mid '90s, I was 14 years old. My cousin's boyfriend gave me a stack of books for Christmas." In it was a bunch of X-Men and Wolverine. After reading, I was hooked. Shortly after that, he showed me his climate-controlled room that was wall-to-wall long boxes full of old stuff. He even let me borrow X-Men number 14 through 25, the first Sentinels. That is awesome. So back in like the 90s, climate-controlled comic book room? I know. That's <laughs> dedication, man. That is dedication. He's ahead of the game. For sure. That's pretty cool. Yeah. But there, there were there were some there were some enthusiasts back then who did this type of thing. Yeah. You know, you get some guys that would build a you know like a walk-in humidor for their cigars. Yeah. And there were guys out there that had climate-controlled rooms for their comic books. Does it really make a difference? Uh, supposedly, there's this thing called foxing that yeah. happens on comic books. Yeah. And they think it's because of gases being released and things like that, because it kind of looks like little stains on the paper. And uh, they think that that comes from comic books not being stored at the right temperature, hmm. and so uh, so yeah, climate controlled rooms started to become like like a thing. I don't think a lot of people do it, um, but you know, foxing comes from you know that type of thing. So yeah. sounds like a lot of busy work. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could manage something. Like I don't that. know, man. If I spent two hundred fifty thousand dollars on a comic book, I think I'd have a climate control room. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, you got the next one yeah. as well. Three in a row. Next one comes from Sam Pangan. My elementary school librarian introduced comics to me. It was how I learned to read English. I was first introduced to the Justice League and then to the X-Men. I fell in love with the X-Men, and from there, I kept on reading. Isn't that a lot of people's stories? It is. I, I like the fact that it uh, introduced them to English. Yeah. Cause just imagine his vocabulary. Bam. And all this stuff, you know, you know, right? I mean, some of the words you might have been using, like during class or something, you know. But because uh, if you're reading the X Men, uh-huh. some of the words that they would use, 
That's an interesting vocabulary if you're just learning English. That's for sure. That's for sure. Or some of the catchphrases that were in those books that we don't ever use in English language. Yeah. Like, it's clobbering time. You yeah, know? <laughs> exactly. But well, I like that the the librarian introduced him to the book. I mean, that's kind of cool. You know, That's and, awesome. And, uh, you know, I think comics should be in libraries. And I know a lot of the trade paperbacks are there. And I used to go to uh, the library and look for comic books, and there were very few and far between, you know, what they had. I remember always seeing, like, Green Lantern at the, my local library. For some reason, nobody stole the Green Lantern. Books. Nobody stole the Lantern. Everyone <laughs> stole everything else, but there was always tons of Green Lantern ones just sitting there, you Interesting. know? Interesting. I don't know. I guess people didn't like Green Lantern. <laughs> That's great. Um, you got the next one. Yeah, the next one is from Scott uh, Pollock. Um, he says, happy birthday, Bueller's mom. For one, a ton of people said happy birthday to, to my mother. Last week was her birthday. And uh, she read all the comments and stuff. She thought that was pretty cool. So it totally embarrassed her a lot. You know, that was my goal was to try and embarrass ah. my mom. Because uh, she's very, uh, she's a lovely lady, but she's, she's a little timid. And she doesn't like, you know, attention. Right, so right. It was kind of fun to give it to <laughs> Does she watch the show? Uh, she says she does, but I don't yeah. know if she does. Happy belated birthday, there viewers, you mom. <laughs> uh, but, okay, let's go ahead and get to this. Uh, Scott says, my grandparents were my comic influence. My parents were going through a nasty divorce at age seven. The judge made me choose which parent I wanted to stay with, and the other got visitation every other weekend. My grandparents got me comics as a way to help me escape through stories and art. I am very thankful that they helped me in a pretty terrible situation somewhat better. Um, I went through a very similar thing. My parents divorced when I was about eight years old, mm -hmm. and I can remember the day. Like I was like I to, I was like something's not right, and I was eight years old, and I could tell there was something not right. Yeah, and like later that day. It's like, we need to talk. I'm like, what? <laughs> you know? I, so the into way, my spidey sense was working. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, they got divorced. And it all worked out through time. You know, they remarried. And I have more brothers and sisters because of it. You know, half brothers, uh, step brothers, all that good stuff. But uh, um, I remember that time. And I remember kind of feeling the same way. I just needed to take a break, breather. I went and spent a lot of time with my grandparents mm. at the time and that was when I was like going down the street to 7-Eleven and getting comics and reading comics all the time and stuff like that. We moved from where we were. We were in a big huge house with multiple siblings and it literally like overnight it was like me, my parents, my two older brothers, my two older sisters and then like the next weekend it's me and my mom living in a one bedroom apartment in the city. Wow. I'm like, what just happened? Because we lived down on the farm. Oh, wow. Yeah, we were, we had, like, horses and stuff, you know, and, like, acres of land and everything. Like, what, what just happened? Right. You know? And it was literally overnight. So you need to find some comfort. And comics, like, just like uh, how Scott said, was that comfort and was sure. that escape. And those, these comics have been providing that for so many people for so long. Yeah, my, my story is similar, just in a different different direction, of course. You know, the, the death of my mother and losing my family as a result of that as well uh, was a catalyst. And uh, when I really locked, latched onto comics, that was my way of coping as well. Yeah. And uh, I'm so glad that they were there for me. Yeah, they, they, they go a long way. I don't, I don't know if, uh, I don't think a lot of people outside who don't understand comics really understand what they mean to people. And when you try to explain that to a lot of people, they just don't get it. No, they don't. And uh, unfortunately, I think they're kind of missing out. I do, too. To I do, too. Else, so. But, you know, we have a lot of people out there that are now all of a sudden know a lot of names that we know, yeah. right, as a result of understanding just how great these characters are. And so there's there's a little bit of light there. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> okay, I got the next one as well. This is from Chris Kaufman. It says, my mother would let me pick comics off the rack at a convenience store, but I was never hooked until she grabbed a poly bag three pack of comics. Those are great. I missed those. Bring them back. Come on. Yeah. With the little flap that like, goes on the hook, all yep. that stuff. <laughs> uh, okay. Back to this real quick. Uh, which one of the books was Flash number 268. 
in this book, someone stole Barry Allen, kid's neighbor's copy of All-Star Flash number one. In the comic, Barry Allen was a comic collector, and it showed him with his stacks of comics. And I wanted to be just like The Flash. 13,000 comics later, I finally realized I am not like The Flash at all. <laughs> I didn't know that Barry Allen was a comic yeah, collector. Yeah, he was a comic collector. That was that was one of the things that I've always loved about the character. Hmm. And uh, But, you know, 13,000 comics, man, that's, a, that's an awesome collection. That is awesome. Even collection. though you just found out you're not The Flash. I mean, it took you a while, but other than that. Maybe Quicksilver. Maybe Quicksilver. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Very cool. I, I mean, honestly, you go back to the three packs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, Walmart's doing some something right now with yeah. the DC. It's not the same. Not the same. I, the same. I mean, if you can't peek in the middle and see the book, yeah. it's not the same. No. Because no. you have to be able to peek. And that was the to. best thing about those that three was, packs. It was. Just a little bit. Stretch that little plastic a little bit. Oh, that's the one I want. I, and it I, was always West Coast Avengers number two. <laughs> For me, it was Star Wars number one. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> was awesome. every, almost every pack had Star Wars number one in it. You should have bought them. I should have. I kept going like, no, already got that one. Oh, really? Got that, really got the reprints? One. They might have been reprints. Okay. Right. You know, probably. All right. I got the next one as well. This is from Christopher uh, Babcock. Um, I began as an 80s spinner rack kid, collecting Transformers monthly at a grocery store. My first superhero book was Iron Man, followed by The Punisher. After that, I visited my LCS for the first time for back issues and jumped onto Silver Surfer number one, which had just came out. And, of course, a shout-out to my best friend, Doug, who lent me Dark Knight Returns that fully opened my eyes to the art of comics. Sorry for the lengthy comment. New subscriber this week. Thank you, Bueller and Bob, for this great series and channels. Those are some really great picks. Yeah. And I've always said that Dark Knight Returns book is, like, one of my favorite. It's on my top five. Yeah, for sure. For and sure. if you're introduced with that book into comics, which this is very close to being some of the introduction that he had, mm-hmm. it's such an interesting book to be introduced to. Yeah. And your preconceived notions of comic books are out the door. Out the door. As soon as you open that book. For sure. For sure. And you're like, whoa, this is this is real. Yeah. This is, this is intense. You've read it. Yeah, absolutely. What's no, your thoughts? My... my my um, experience was just like Kevin Smith's, you know. I, I had preconceived notions of Batman from the Batman 66 show, which I grew up on. Uh, and then some of the comic books that I did read, like in the barbershops and stuff like that, they were still that campiness. Yeah. Uh, but when I picked up The Dark Knight Returns, I flipped out. It yeah. was like, and, and just like me, and there were others that did the same thing. We carried that thing around like it was the Bible. Oh, yeah. You know? I still have mine. <laughs> I wish I still it, had mine. It looks horrible. <laughs> it's barely holding it together. For sure. Yeah. But I think that was one of the first comics that I've read probably 10, 15 times yeah. just that year alone. And uh, I've always loved that story. Yeah. It's one, one of the best. And also the other books he mentioned... Um, the Transformers, and then followed by Iron Man and Punisher. Yeah. Punisher is one of my favorites. And Silver Surfer, number one, when that just came out, you know, he was introduced that as well. So yeah. he got a little bit of the, the cosmic flair and all that stuff. So some great books to be introduced in the comics. And uh, let's go ahead. Doug, thanks. Thank you, Doug. Give you a little shout out to his best friend, Doug. So that's pretty cool. For sure. There you go. So uh, <laughs> you have the last comment there, Bob. So the last comment comes from Alex Morris. He says, my mother, may she rest in peace, got me into comic books. I was in the first grade, got sick, and had to be sent home. In those days, there was a person at the school who drove young kids home when they got sick. It was 1961, and I had just discovered the Adventures of Superman TV show. My mother knew I was obsessed with Superman. I grew up in a very rural area and never had never seen a comic book. Heck, I was just learning how to read. When I got home, my mother had put me to bed and handed me Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen that featured Superman battling Titano the gorilla with kryptonite eyes. I remember Titano. He says, I was hooked. Uh, I didn't know Superman had a red and blue suit. That's right, because the show was black and white, right? Uh, I didn't know he flew with his fist balled up. Kurt Swan was the artist, and to my six-year-old eyes, he was Picasso. My brother and I got 25 cents a week for allowance, and that meant we could go to town, Moments, Illinois, and get two comics and some candy. I'm 65 years old, and I love this truly American art form that has not waned. Comic books taught me to read and ignited my curiosity. Thank you, Mama. Great show, guys. Keep up the good work. That is heartfelt. I love that comic comment. 
And uh, I want to thank your mom too, because that right there is awesome. That right there is is being introduced to something that just blew your mind. Yeah, uh, that, that's kind of neat to think that you know your Superman impressions was the black and white TV show, and then you're introduced to this comic book that's full of color. Yeah. Blue, red, yellow, you name it. You know, it's like, wow, I didn't know. Because, I mean, I, I, I had a black and white television. Yeah. You know, and didn't realize, you know, what the colors were as far as certain things that they were showing and stuff. But to be introduced as Superman. Yeah. Uh, that's a pretty great uh, thing to see for the first time. Absolutely. And uh, I'm sorry you got sick. Yeah, but yeah, you know yeah. what? It worked out for your benefit there, uh, Alex, because you, uh, <laughs> you got a Superman comic and stuff. Yeah. But just the fact that you... You get your allowance of 25 cents and bought two comic books and candy. When I read stuff like this, it just reminds me of a simpler time. Yeah. And you miss those times like that. Like I miss miss hanging out with my older brother, you know, and just going and getting candy or stuff, you know. And like I was at the stores, they had candy bars like $1.25, you yeah. know. And I used to remember going to 7 Eleven and they had like the. They had racks like here. This rack was fifty cents. This rack was ten cents. This rack was five cents. This rack was a penny. Penny, yeah. And I'm like sitting there picking all the penny can or the, the penny candy. Yeah. yeah. And it was great. It was those little chocolate balls. Yeah. They're, they're, it tastes horrible, but horrible. It, it, didn't, it didn't matter. <laughs> you know? I walk out with a bag. <laughs> exactly. It was wonderful. And it's just when you read things like this, and it's just simpler. And I don't think we ever get back to that point. You know, I just. That's just the way the world it, is. It's a magical time. Yeah, and uh, I, I'm very grateful for those times I had, you know, and just the, you know, being able to just uh, ride my bike into town and get my comics or whatever it was, play at the arcade and not really have a care in the world. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, you miss that, and I hope that my kids experienced that a little bit when they were growing up. I tried to provide that for them, and I hope when they have kids, I hope they get a chance to kind of provide that for them as well. Yeah. Whether it be comics or whatever it is, it doesn't matter, but, you know, enjoy that time. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would agree with you, and, and you know, um, I, I, I love, you know, the, the, the relationship that he had with his mother in this comment, Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that to me is one of the greatest joys of my life is being a parent. Yeah. And, uh, you know, whether I turn my kids on to comic books or skateboarding or whatever it is. Barbara Dolls. I'm, or Smurfs. <laughs> Anybody get that reference? If you do, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, just the, the relationship that I have with my kids is, is my greatest joy, yeah. for Very sure. cool. Well, I want to say thank you to everyone who left comments about this. You know, it was kind of like an origin story. We, we actually kind of hit on this topic before. Mm -hmm. I just kind of rephrase the term a little yeah, bit you know yeah, but you know I always love hearing these and, and there's and there's other videos that we've done like I said where we've kind of asked origin stories and there was a ton on there as well that we shared last time and going forward I want to do this you know every couple months sure and just hear these wonderful stories because we're having new people find our channel all the time new stories that are being shared including yours ours it's a good time so thank you so much to everyone who left comments and looking forward to next week. Absolutely. But let's go ahead and switch gears and go to our final five. Do you want to go? Uh, go I'll, ahead. Okay. You can go. I can go? Okay. Yeah, there you go. I'll go. Yeah. And he was right. I brought some Deathstroke. I Look told, at that. I knew it. <laughs> Here's, I just brought some covers that I like. Here's issue number one. And a uh, great thing about the Deathstroke is um, I'm celebrating the fact that my first appearance at Deathstroke, which is Teen Titans number two, signed by the great George Perez came back at a 9.2 this week and so here's my love for the character is issue number 11 here's issue number four which has some great Batman action on it nice and then if I'm gonna show Batman I got to show some Superman so I love that cover right there so there's my final five very cool all right I got my five all right and uh, these are some McFarlane goodness nice. from the Spider-Man we mentioned them in our comments uh, Spider-Man number two, everybody remembers this book. Yeah. Uh, Spider-Man number nine with Wolverine on the cover, kind of neat. Another Spider-Man number ten, I think I have the first twenty of these, all the McFarlane covers. Um, here is number twelve. This is probably one of my favorite ones right there. And then of course, 
Number 13, which is the number one issue, uh, just with the different black suit yeah. instead. So I remember when that came out, I was like, oh, we got to get them all. Because I had like the four different versions of number one, and then that one. Yeah. Line them all up. Look really dorky, whatever. So I got a question for you. Yeah. Were you um, like me back in the 90s when this stuff came out? Anytime McFarlane did Wolverine on a cover, I'd flip out because that was kind of like... I always wanted him to either do Wolverine or, or the X-Men. I actually think his Wolverine looks kind of weird. It does look weird. Yeah, it does look I, weird. I, that's one thing I, I've loved McFarlane, but his Wolverines, and, and he did a lot of Wolverines on um, Marvel Tales. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, and the X-Men team as well. And they look funny. Yeah. That's the best way I can describe them. They look kind of funny. And honestly, when it comes to uh, X-Men and characters, uh, Jim Lee is my go-to guy for me to draw X-Men characters. Right. Um, I just, you know, you look at those X-Men books and stuff that he did, and I was like, yep, that's the X-Men right there. Yeah. I always wanted to see full interpretations by certain artists. Like, on, like yeah. him doing the full team of the X-Men, I would have really liked to have seen. I would have loved to have seen Dale Keown do, do yeah. the X-Men as well. I have. There's one, Marvel Tales, that he did the whole team. Is it really? Yeah. I'll, I'm pretty sure I have it. I'll show it to you. Oh, that'd be cool. It, it's he did Because he did, like... Um, I'm pretty sure it was Marvel Tales, but he did like three or four of them that were featuring the X-Men team themselves and with Spider-Man. And there's one that has literally every member in there. So. Because I never I never collected Marvel Tales. Yeah. But anyway, I'd love to see that. There you go. Anyway, those are our final five. He had some more Deathstroke books. I had some Spider-Man books that kind of went hand in hand, I guess. Uh, but you know what? That's our show. I mean, that's it. You know, it's a pretty light show this week. I yeah. Think, I think we kind of needed a little breather for a little bit. A little break. Um, I did want to mention real fast, once again, our channel spotlight was Hero and the Kid. If you're not subscribed to them, please go ahead and do so. We have a goal. We're trying to get them to 1,000 subscribers uh, this week. Bob got his channel to 1,000, so we don't need to focus on that anymore. It's all, <laughs> it's all up to you, buddy. You're there. You're, you've, you've met that threshold, and now your, your destiny is in your own hands. This so is true. There this you go. Is true. So we're shifting our focus. <laughs> Two here on the kid, uh, Will and Sean. We'll see what we can do. So if you haven't checked out their channel, the link is down below, and also they're featured on the Comics with Bueller uh, homepage as well. Uh, that's all I got, Bob. You want to share them uh, about your channel real quick? Sure. My channel is Everything Comics. Uh, every Saturday morning, I drop a uh, coffee and comic book show where I uh, hang out in a local coffee shop and talk about the comics I picked up that week. That drops every Saturday, sometimes on Sunday, depending on how quick I can edit the video. Uh, and then this last week, there was a couple things that I did. I had an unboxing video. Uh, we're at a, a great haul, uh, some CGC stuff that I was really excited about. And uh, then I've also been on a couple other channels here this in the last week. But uh, thank you guys so much for the support. And um, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the next season has for us. You're very popular. Am I? Yeah. What season are you talking about? Just the next season, the next... Like, you know, whatever, dude. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> it's the comic book season. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Go for it. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody. Appreciate your time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You know what to do. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>